let me express my thanks and my fear <laughs> being before such a distinguished audience uh, tonight. It's been a joy to be with you these last few days. We were in London uh, on Sunday in various meetings. And yesterday we were in uh, at Cambridge. We understand that there's some creative tension between Cambridge and Oxford. <laughs> um, but it was a glorious experience talking with you about the world that you intend to create uh, and to live in. I want to express my thanks to the professors who are here tonight who grace me with your presence and the host for inviting me. I wish the student leaders who hear the union would please stand. Union leaders, please stand. <laughs> I want to talk in some measure tonight before discussion about dare to care in quest for global justice. The world made smaller by science and technology, distance has dwarfed speed. We can no longer merely survive apart, we must now learn to live together. Whatever affects one of us directly affects the rest of us indirectly and quickly. We live in a one world order. There are no more foreigners in this world tonight. Uh, we left uh, New York, coming to London, six and a half hours with tailwind, seven hours from New York to LA. We live in a one world order. We've globalized capital. And banks fail in New York, Northern Rock fail in Britain, and all across the world. When banks fail due to greed, lack of oversight, they manipulated labor and capital. Tuition rise and debt is now threatening a generation of young students. Tonight, student loan debt in America is greater than credit card debt, over a trillion dollars. In these last few years, we've changed so much. I was arrested in 1960 trying to use a public library in Greenville, South Carolina. Much of the colonial apartheid separation schemes have been discredited and no longer exist, but schemes have simply changed forms tonight. We hear so much about Dr. King's dream speech. Arguably, it was not the dream speech. It was the broken promise speech. He said, if you look at it carefully, 246 years of legal slavery where blacks were the biggest source of capital for the country, more valuable than land, insurance, or banks. Finally, a war in which 700,000 Americans were killed. A war, when it was over, Lincoln declared a national holiday called Thanksgiving. Not just a forest, not just a fall festival of gathering of food, but thank God for saving the Union for ending slavery. 246 years. Then there was the promise. Those who had been enslaved would now be freed and given first class citizenship. For 12 years, something called Reconstruction was taking place then. The right-wing forces never stopped fighting to regain their stature. By 1896, in America, apartheid became law for another 58 years. Another King's case was that the day I stand in Lincoln's majestic shadow, January 1st, 1863, with the Emancipation Proclamation, you promised. As I look forward to the Congress, 13th Amendment, you promised. And yet the day he gave that address, from Texas across to Florida, up to Maryland, blacks could not use a single public toilet. Dogs should take pictures on state capitals, but we could not do so on the lawns of our capitals. 
across the South. My father and black veterans had to sit behind knots of POWs on American military bases. The day he gave that speech, our money was counterfeited in much of the South. We could not buy ice cream at Howard Johnson, not could we rent a room at Holiday Inn. I refuse a nation so great as ours. We can fight world wars and declare itself to be a great democracy. It cannot honor its promise. We got a promissory note, bounce check, marked in sufficient funds. I dream of a day you will honor the broken promise. When my children can function, we can go here and there. I dream of a day when you will honor the broken promise. The dream is imagination in so many ways. The promise to be fulfilled will cost, will require an investment. Whether we invest in the short, on the front side and on the back side, have so much misery. We've globalized capital 50 years later. We are tonight free, but not equal. Freer, but less equal 50 years later. Free, but not equal. We've globalized capital. You need not go to a, a country across the ocean to occupy them militarily. You can occupy them with banks, with insurance schemes. We've globalized capital. Enslaved workers in their own countries without a military soldier being in sight. We've globalized capital without globalizing human rights, without globalizing workers' rights, or globalizing women's rights, or children's rights, or environmental security. Bank dominance is a real thing, threatening global stability. Too big to fail, they say, when these banks, without oversight, fail. New York collapsed. Then the Northern Rock and banks all over the world. Because of concentrated globalized capital and media covering it, owned by the banks in many, in many ways. J.P. Chase last week was fined $14.5 billion for misdeeds subprime lending, predatory lending, private mortgage schemes, taking people's homes by the millions, driving the middle class into poverty, undermining urban tax bases, driving youth out of school, guns in, drugs in, jobs out, and collapse because of the 1% justice, 1% power. Fourteen and a half billion dollar fine and no criminal charge. In this world, old patterns of discrimination must give way to new access and entry points for those who have been locked out. In America, we call it affirmative action. <coughs> Women and people of color who are locked out based on negative action or indifference. White males had preference and priority. They had inheritance and formal laws of perpetuity and acceptance to reign supreme. Women and people were locked out. It's a strange expression here called positive discrimination. That's language used by the right wing to keep people locked out. There's no such thing as positive discrimination. Discrimination is wrong. And if you put positive, you're positive wrong. Or in front of it, negative wrong. It is positive <coughs> access to a road too long been closed. For 300 years, somebody's been locked out by virtue of their race, of their gender, their religion. You create positive entry, positive access. Those who have had the inside track for centuries must not call entry discrimination. There is no such thing as Positive discrimination is designed to create confusion. But there's something called positive access. The Voting Rights Act is so fundamental in America to our changes. Significant is that while if you're locked out, effort and excellence and hard work matters. Effort, excellence and hard work matters. But inheritance, access, and perpetual laws matter even more. So even excellence can get you on the road unless 
Unless the government intervenes, you cannot get on the highway. It's all interest signs are closed. 1965 in America, we asked the government to intervene. They had to intervene to end slavery. And then intervene to end Jim Crow apartheid laws. They intervened for the right to vote. Blacks, old enough to vote. Veterans of world wars, patriotic enough to vote. Some of PhDs could not pass the exams, literate enough to vote, but could not vote. But once that was intervention and we could vote, women got the right to serve on juries in 1967. There were no women on the Supreme Court. 18 year olds got the right to vote in 1970. Those serving in Vietnam, they could not vote. We got the right to vote on college campuses in 1974. Bilingual voting in 1975, a nation of many languages, but one message. The great dream being you are welcome here if you yearn to breathe free, but you could not breathe free because you did not have the basic rights of protection. So laws changed, and behavior changed, and attitudes are changing. But the impact of the devastating foreclosure crisis, the impact of globalizing the job market, more billionaires up top, more, million, more middle class sinking, more poverty base expanding. Now the vote is being suppressed. And for our youth, we choose rather than invest in prenatal care, head start and daycare on the front side, we have jail care and welfare on the backside. What does this say to you and for your future? There are 21 schools in Oxbridge with no blacks. One school without a black in five years. Does that say that your intelligence is supreme? And those locked out have less intelligence? Is that the natural order? endowed by God, or is that the social order endowed by manipulation? If the social can be fixed without divine intervention, if segregation by any other name, it hurts the segregator and the segregated. If you plant two seeds in the ground of equal strength and water the both of them, and put a wall in between. One will grow tall, multiple fruits, strong stems, branches, and one will be stunted, not grow and be barren. The barren one is not a lesser one, not a fruitful one, a superior one. It's something called photosynthesis, the one that gets the sunlight grows. The one in the shadows is stunted or dwarfed. When the walls come down and the sun can shine on both seeds, there are multiple, and everybody wins, including leads to growth, and as growth, everybody wins. Someone assumes that the in group and all the A's in the classroom makes you more fit and smarter in the world or to be a world leader. It does not represent brain distribution. It is in your interest in this world to have classmates to look somewhat like the world. Half of all human beings in the world tonight are Asian. <clears throat> Half of them are Chinese, and they were not discovered by Nixon. One eighth of the human race is African, one fourth Nigerian. In America, South, Central Latin America, <clears throat> it's two thirds of our population. <clears throat> English is a, <coughs> excuse me, English is a minority language in our hemisphere. It becomes our challenge in this world <coughs> where most people are yellow, brown, black, non-Christian, thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Most people in this world tonight are yellow, brown, black, non-Christian, poor, female, young, and don't speak English. In that world, to make all age and a slither of the world is not enough to be a leader. In that world, you must see the world through a door, not through a keyhole. In that world, of an endowed Africa, of an expanding Asia, in that world, you must have classmates, roommates, and friends. Many languages with one message to share and grow and build together. Good grades alone do not make you a leader. As a matter of fact, students with the best of primary and secondary education are prime for the access lane. You go to a, a well-endowed private school in your formative years, with teachers from this university or from Cambridge, as the case may be. You learn how to write essays. You come in visit in the summer. You're prime for entry. Those with less education, less opportunity, behind the wall, or less in development, but not less in ability. But in a real sense, our leadership is determined not just by height, but by breadth and depth. Many of the youth who are here have the best teachers, best training, blessed tutoring, and you should have it, but others should have it as well. This preparation gets you onto the highway. The lack of blacks on this campus is not natural, nor it is social. Because everybody's disadvantaged. On the soccer field, when your team plays the opposition team, it's multiracial, multicultural. Why are those from these dismal dimensions of poverty so good at American football or British soccer? Why are we so good at what's so hard to become? The world's fastest runner, as both from Jamaica and as our basketball teams. Why are we so good at what's so hard to do? Become a world-class athlete. From the most impoverished conditions. <coughs> broken homes, broken silence, broken dreams. Why are we so good at what's so hard to do or to become? Because whenever the playing field is even. And the rules are public. And the goals are clear. And the referees are fair. And the score is transparent. We can make it. Is the playing field even? The access to education, health care, jobs, and contracts, and capital? Not long ago, there was a Olympics in China. First debate was environmental hazards of such. Can we breathe and run? They managed to get past that. Once the field of play was declared to be open, gymnasts from one part of the world, tracks from another part of the world, basketball from another part of the world, boxing and all of that, on the playing field, with an even playing field, we could live with the outcome, no matter who was the victim, no matter who lost the match. Because it first started with something called an even playing field. Outside of the playing field, access to labor and wages and benefits were not even. And therein lies the tension. You were called upon with the first class education, global, to become rural leaders. The kind that understand Pope Francis' appeal to address the needs of the poor. The grass aside, the bottom up, not just top down. His call to character. The kind of leader that can see the value of beating swords in the plowshares and spears and the pruning hooks. I was here not long ago when Mr. Bush from Princeton, Mr. Blair from Oxford, two men from great scholarly institutions had a big idea, invade Iraq. We lost some money, <coughs> lives, and honor. What were the grievances in the wall from great universities? They got in, 
They go right the next day, pass the exam, vertical training, over 100,000 Iraqis killed, more than 10,000 Americans and British citizens killed, men and injured, disrupt, dis, destroy the society that could have been nudged into more civil behavior with its citizens, and then Afghanistan, and then drones in, in Pakistan, and then Libya, and then Syria, and then something happened. And that's something, fortunately, uh, when I was here a month ago, we were about to invade and about to attack Syria. As it were, Putin stepped in a gap. Iran accepted his wisdom. Now there's a move toward a kind of trust and verify rearrangement. Those that make the most money off of military weapons don't want to trust or verify the deal. They, they want to fight and make money from war. But there is a new capacity because somebody dreamed of a new day. The layers of darkness are being removed and fear is being removed and hope is coming on the way. I hope Iran will continue to disarm. But on the brink of peace or war, we must make the decision. Not just because we know, but because we care. And the Indian people say, you are from Oxford. They know you know something. You pass rigorous academic tests and training. You are from Oxford. You have it on your degree. You display it, and it's no secret. I went to Oxford and graduated eventually. But people care that you know. There's some of you a doctor from here, or a barrister, or a banker, or of some skill, of some field from one of the colleges. People want to know that you care, but they really want to know that, that you care. It's important for people to know the care that you know. People care that you know. They really want to know, do you care? And there are those who know and <coughs> who seem not to care. That's why this issue, to integrate our academics with our character is so critical. To think, to know, to believe, to feel, to act, to have faith. Jesus, in his own way, said this in the story of the Good Samaritan. So the man was walking down the street attending to his business, and thieves from some corner jumped out and robbed him where people were frequently robbed. It assumes that there must have been an infrastructure issue, because if people were frequently robbed, it was a blind corner that should have cleared away the corner, but they were robbed there often. The man was lying there, bleeding, dying, feeling hopeless, and then he saw a religious leader coming his way of his own faith. Rabbi, minister, reverend, man of God. He assumed he cared enough to come offer him some relief. The Bible says he went to the other side of the street and kept walking. A man who knew and a man who prayed. As he's reaching for breath and for help, a man of his own ethnic group came his way and went to the other side of the street. He kept walking. About the time to give up, a man from Samaria, different religion, different race, different language, worshiped God differently, stopped and helped him out. It did not matter that the Samaritan cared, the American, the, the, the Samaritan had some sense of, of knowing, but he had some sense of caring. Beyond color. Beyond culture, some call character. It must be blended into your sense of, of academic prowess and your capacity to retain good information. He said it another way in the parable about the, good, the lost sheep. He says, sheep come hither in this parable. And 99 came. He said, well, where is my lost sheep? I can hear my imagination someone saying, well, 99 of us are here. What about, you can always lose one. He said, but the one matters to me. But we heard you. We came running. We were obedient. Maybe the one who didn't come couldn't hear, and the ear defection may be less detectable. 
Maybe he couldn't hear. Maybe he got kicked by a bigger sheep. Maybe he stumbled, slipped on a rock, trapped in barbed wire. And snakes are crawling. They see and smell fresh prey. My divinity rests upon my ability to care for those who are left out and who are locked behind. In this world today, we must dream anew. Dream not to be stunned by the status quo. Dream of a world without a nuclear threat. A world where all have drinkable water. Where children have adequate food and health care. Where hope surpasses fear. An environment free from poison and waste. Where one's gender and sexual preferences or race is not an impediment to making a, a contribution to society. Dream to choose coexistence over co annihilation. Hope over fear. The world, the new world is possible. We have the burden and the opportunity to make it happen. If you are selfless enough and sacrificial enough to risk greed and consumption, if you care enough to choose sharing over control, you have the capacity to make a new world order. In so many ways, it's your challenge tonight the democratic order when people run for office. You dream of orderly organized commitments to care for those whose backs are against the wall. When you went to school, the subject matter you studied is important. People must know that you care. They, know, they, know, they must know that you are able, but that you care. Fight for peace, justice, and equality. This world is your world. Keep up alive. Thank you very much.